So I rented a kimono in Tokyo and literally nobody cared. <laughs> I love that. So in this vlog, I'm going to show you the process of renting a kimono in Tokyo and overall just how positive of an experience it was for me. <laughs> she owns this place. Queen Tiwa. Okay, so before anyone tries to jump me, I just want to give a full disclaimer that renting or wearing a kimono in Japan is not cultural appropriation. It is actually highly encouraged as well. So as long as you're being respectful towards the culture and showing your appreciation, it is okay. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Let me know if you want me to stop. <laughs> Canada? Canada. Yes. So you have a variety of options of kimonos to choose from. And I thought that was really cool because I only paid $30 and yet the amount of beauty that was in front of me at this moment, I was like, dang, I don't even know what to choose. Like there are so many options. It was honestly a bit overwhelming. While I was doing that, sending my sister a picture because I was like, please help. I was able to eventually choose one. And the hardest part is honestly getting dressed. Like you are put in a room with a trillion other girls everyone's getting dressed and there's older women who are basically putting on the gowns for us and doing everything for us from start to finish and it does take a bit of time but they're so hard working like you can tell they want to make you as comfortable as possible which i was very thankful for we're both vlogging just influencer right 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 you know how it is Oh my gosh, it's so packed. Like two or three years ago, it definitely wasn't this crowded. Yeah, eh? I heard that it's gotten worse, especially since like borders have opened. Everyone is like, ah, oh, you know. Honestly, it really was crowded there. Like, I don't know if I just was not prepared for all of that, but the way I was like <gasps> trying to keep it together. <laughs> the way the whole world is here right now, so beautiful. So they have a bunch of souvenirs here on the side. They have cosmetics, postcards. Oh. A lot of like touristy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. So... Not this man. Cute. She's slaying, she's slaying. Yes, she owns this place. Queen Tiwa. We're all living in her world. <laughs> So as you can see, people literally did not care. And I was like, you know what? Thank God, because I was very nervous, but I'm thankful that I was able to have this opportunity to show my appreciation towards 
this beautiful Japanese attire in such a sacred traditional setting as well. And so I would gotten a lot of comments, especially on TikTok from other people, especially other black girls who are like, I want to try this, but I'm so scared of what people might think. People don't care. And if anything, people might say you're cute. You know, they might say you're beautiful. They might want to take pictures of you. But for the most part, I did not experience any negative backlash or nasty stares or anything like that. So if this is something that you want to try as well, I say go for it. Okay, so from this moment on, we decided to get this strawberry mochi, which is very popular here in Asakusa. So if you are ever in this area, please stop by this store and get this snack because the way I was having an out-of-body experience, it was so juicy. I've never had a strawberry that juicy before. The mochi was sweet, the texture was amazing, and I highly recommend it. Like This was totally worth the walk to get the snack. It honestly, I feel like we spent more time in the rental place yeah, <laughs> than actually definitely. exploring, but it was still nice. I, would... I think like, they're not always... That's a girl. <laughs> normal? Normal. Uh, normal? Normal. Uh, normal. No, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it was so nostalgic. Like, we're all girls. That is so smart. <laughs> wow. That is so good. How does it compare to ramen back in? In, in where? Back, back home. Honestly, this is killing it. Like, 